My dear Shil, I'm just embarking. The heat is unbearable here, even more than subtropics. Dark brown flies, fat like alligators, buzz around my head and sting me. Unfortunately, it is no longer the rusty metal ship that Goldie and Paul Parin once took and I'm not standing on a coast in Central Africa behind the island of Sao Tome and Principe where colonialism began. I instead find myself in Tunis. I walk over an inflatable air cushion onto the floating shuttle of a Chinese company which is powered by solar energy and flies 5 meters above the surface of the water. Lying down it takes 30 minutes to cross the passage that was lined with corpses of migrants in 2020. Crowds fled from North Africa to the paradise of a European capital. But I don't want to dwell on these historic events, it saddens me. A young dancer tells me that they have demolished the Unité d'Habitation, jean Louis Tower as well as the Museum of Civilization in Marseille and want to renovate a historic residential building with a silicon center and co-work spaces. Le Corbusier's commitment to the Vichy regime is probably one of the reasons behind the demolition of his buildings today just like the monuments of the colonialists. Dear Blonde, I skip through your lines in one breath, standing in a place where Le Corbusier's rooftop garden was once open to the public. A large group of activists has gathered to protest against the ongoing dismantling of culture. They dance to express the issue of the systemic importance of art. Students hold transparent screens with claims in the air. Here in Marseille, all art academies were closed last week. I'm afraid that this news has been censored in Tunisia. We live in a time of upheaval. What would your world look like without institutionalized art? Best wishes from Marseille to Tunis. Yours, Jill. Unbelievable. There are still technical problems. The shuttle should have let us fly to Marseille long ago. There are even mechanics in blue overalls, not robots, but dirty people covered in black suit, real craftsmen. How nostalgic. Jean Tangley looked the same in the photos of Jean Kender. I should already be in Marseille. Now I'm sitting in a cafe in the port of Tunis, La Petite Etoile. Can you tell me what plans you have for the Unité d'Habitation, the former Corbusier Terrain? I would be excited to know. Many years ago, in his book Trouble in Paradise, Slava Zizek wrote about the 50% of useless elements that would be generated by digitization. That has now happened. Nowadays, the most popular subject is the Pleasure Garden. All wastelands, including the one of the Unity, all squares and roofs are invaded by small green paradises, which are cultivated on a cooperative basis according to the principle of permaculture. They have also torn up large squares in Marseille and planted mango, pomegranate and date trees. The concrete has to give way to shady trees so that we don't collapse at 50 degrees. The gardens are also places for social encounter. There are debate groups, 
Bikram Yoga sessions and an exchange of knowledge among people of all stripes. No wonder that art institutions are all disappearing after the great global economic crisis in 2020 and the frozen budgets for culture. The great skill of us artists is to react creatively and flexibly. I am currently in the process of founding an open school and will later meet my students in the Palm Garden on the Vieux Port. What will you do when you get back to Marseille? I'm working for a politics of respect. All of my cultural endeavors in Europe, as well as in Africa, are for the benefit of the people and are socially orientated. Finally, humans have a right to live. From my point of view, investigative art is now the most up-to-date form of art as was the case with forensic architecture 20 years ago. It investigates and documents violence, destruction and corrupt machinations around the world. As for your question, I will come to them later. I'm running onto the hoovering shuttle, hoping it leaves. As the rising sea level is flooding the entire Vieux-Port, rice fields are now being cultivated here. The remains of the Mützem protrude greenish from the water. Carpets of algae grow on a perforated facade to form an organic synthesis. Technical robots filter the seashore non-stop in order to transport the algae into the design and transformation facilities. Today with my students, I took a look at the company that produces textiles from algae fibers and sketched the first drafts for a workshop with algae waste. Algae are the new petroleum, the new polyester and I can guess that it could be an interesting material for artists. You see, I'm very busy. Fortunately, there are no useless elements in this system, as Titek postulated. According to the latest surveys, the 50% works in the gardens and cultivates fresh fruit and vegetables. So please come back soon, I need you here, blonde. Dear Shil, I'm not a gardener. I need thorn roof gloves, a full body rubber suit to be impervious to the toxic, polluted, fatty, dark and rising water. Am I supposed to scrap the rust of the ruins of the Museum of Civilizations, collect oily algae, collect poisoned blue red glowing fish. From architect to creator to artist and now to gardener, how can I give up my privileged status of cultured white man and move among hundreds of sea gardeners in a camouflage suit in order to look for traces of old Europe and to find the remains of the drowned refuges under the museum? The reduction of tourism is good for the environment. We all breathe the same air. There is no escape, except maybe if you belong to the richest 10% of the population and can afford an oxygen room with micropollutant filter technology. We're all going to get Alzheimer when we get old. 
plant-based food has finally emerged under all the pressure of the climate catastrophe. Do you remember how we were politically vegan decades ago? Because Westerns ate on average one kilo of meat a week and 50 kilos a year, now the arable land is finally all organically planted and Monsanto has been occupied by the employees and put out of service. I'm confident that you will find a place in the new Crystal Palace where personalized guided tours are organized with the stand-up paddle. The collective is still looking for experienced curators there. You mean the multilingual installation by the Indian artist Shilpa Gupta that I recently saw in Tunis? I think it was also in Zurich. I live under your sky too. I will take diving lessons in Marseille. I, who am terrified of fish, sharks and especially of squid. I will need pot dogs and lotion to rejuvenate myself if I want to obtain my diving certification. I will look for modernist set pieces with light and magnetic probes for leather, ceramic, steel and concrete to glue them together and create a new architecture that is reminiscent. I think we no longer have a culture of remembrance. We wage war, murder, slaughter. I will also look for an oxygen cylinder and a wetsuit. I will build a tunnel where we can all escape, follow the archaeological trail, collect everything that is underground that has been deposited. So you see, I'm bursting with energy, zest for action. Maybe it is also the many Tunisian coffees that make me so vigorous. When shall we flee? <laughs>